Okay, we've made it to mode number five, the Mixolydian mode. An awesome word if you're trying to sound smart in front of other people, but more importantly than that, it's a very, very commonly used musical mode because it occurs on the fifth note in any key. And in music, there's a very, very strong relationship between the root note and the fifth note. Now we're doing all this in the key of C. So C is one, C, D, E, F, G, G is five. That's why basically in every song that has a C major chord in it, there's gonna be a G major chord in it at some point or another. And we're gonna kind of go over why that is and why it sounds so good, right? So let's jump right into it. The G Mixolydian mode, starting on a G, we're rooting, it's a major class mode. So we're thinking of the major scale right here. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So G major would be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. We're taking that seventh note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and flattening it. So the Mixolydian mode is the major scale with a flat seven. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky. All right? Now, one of the most commonly used chords within this is actually a seventh chord, short for a dominant seventh chord, and that's just a major chord with a flat seven in it, right? So if we arpeggiate that, we'll take the one, three, five, that'll give us a G major chord, a G, a B, and a D. We're gonna add that F to it, right? Now, this is really interesting actually because so far our other two major class modes, the first mode and the fourth mode, had major seven chords when you arpeggiated. One, two, three, major seven. This is the first one that's actually different. It has what's called a minor seven. If you remember the minor class modes we've done before, that seventh note was always right there, that interval. So it's kind of like a major chord and a minor chord combined into one. That gives you a seven chord, a G seven chord. You may have seen a voicing like this or like this. In blues music especially, they're used all the time, right? They're really great chords. So if we arpeggiate this, it's gonna be a G, a B, a D, and an F. Now, that seven, that flat seven, is what gives this mode its flavor, its sound. So let's learn it across two different octaves, right? So every fret gets its own finger. We're starting with the middle finger on the third fret. Middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky, middle, pinky. Now this is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna slide farther to get to that next one, the flat seven, right? Usually in major we'd go, but since this is a flat seven, there's a seven, we're gonna flatten that. So some people play it like that to get the D, E, F, G, A, but we're gonna do this. All right, so let me do that from the beginning again. Slide, index ring, which brings us to a G and A. So backwards, when you go backwards, do the same thing. Now, another chord that is kind of unique to this is a nine chord, a G nine chord, right? It's the exact same thing. If we were to arpeggio, we're just taking the one, the three, the five, a flat seven, and then the nine, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this shape is right here. So we can get to that arpeggio, we can add that to what we're playing over these chords. One, three, five, flat seven, nine. And I'm gonna kind of turn this into a little bit of a riff, just so you can kind of hear a Mixolydian type sounding thing. Now, if we just play these notes as a position, as a hand position, and uh, to a certain extent how we've been learning all the modes so far, they're really just hand positions to learn the notes in the major scale. The actual modal uh, feel of all of this kind of comes within context of different music, right? And you kind of need something like a backing track to actually hear the Mixolydian nature of this. But if we were to make a riff to kind of inflect something, you get a good idea of how it would sound with a backing track because we're creating an atmosphere of Mixolydian, right? So for instance, I'm just gonna do a riff that kind of uses the things that make it special, right? So. Now, I'm just gonna use two fingers, right? So I'm starting on the third fret, the G. And then I'm gonna go to the major third and the fourth, so. There's the seven and there's the nine, right? So if we start combining those with a little bit of a swing to it. So 
So that's why I like, you can get pretty funky, bluesy, whatever you want with this mode. And let's also learn a dominant seven voicing if we're just gonna root it here, right? So this is one I really like because we can take it from the root position of this mode where your middle finger is gonna be the root note, okay? So our middle finger is playing the one. We're gonna skip all the way to the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. With our ring finger on the D string. And then our pinky right here is gonna play an octave of the B, the third. Now you might notice that we're actually leaving the fifth out, which we technically need to make, but we're implying the fifth in this chord progression here, or this chord voicing right here. So that's gonna be our G7 voicing that we can make from notes of the Mixolydian mode, right? So there's the first note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the seventh. And there's that right there. And again, these are all movable shapes. So even if you're playing, if you go outside the mode and try to just play different things, this is a G7, this is a G sharp seven, A7, B flat seven, B7, C7, so on and so forth, right? So just like the modes, you can move shapes back and forth. This is a chord voicing that you can use back and forth as well. So another thing we've been doing is looking at these as pieces of a larger puzzle. And we're gonna take the first octave of this Mixolydian mode. And inside of it, we're gonna see a shape that we might be more familiar with, which is the C major scale, right? We did this when we rooted it back on the C. Middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky. So inside this mode, G, A, B, C, right? That fourth note of G is a C. So if you do the whole hand shape, You'll notice that once you get to that fourth note, right, starting here on the C, that's where the major scale is hidden. So again, this isn't all about just learning the different modes and what they can do, it's actually just learning how to see the fretboard and being able to kind of lock in on different pieces of shapes that you already know and have them repeat all around the fretboard, and that really increases your fretboard awareness.